Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Abelson with Kinetic Health. Today we're going to talk about fascial planes. This is something I actually wanted to make a video on for a while. And this is a really interesting subject. It's something that crosses over into many different fields. And it's all about kinetic chain relationships and about fascial planes, about how one area of tissue interconnects with the next and how this affects our anatomy, the injuries we have, how we can have an injury in one area and yet the restriction in a, an area maybe far away from that is causing your problem. So I think you'll enjoy this particular rendition of the taping we're doing today because we're going to discuss some really interesting things. We're going to start with what we call the superficial back line. And I'm going to get my uh, partner Evangelos to come in and he's going to go in. Dr. Mialonis is going to tape from the bottom of the foot all the way back up to the top of the head. And then we're going to work on what we call the superficial front line. Now, while we're going through this, I really want to make a point here that this information is coming from a wide variety of researchers. From Thomas Myers from Anatomy Trains, from the Stuccos in Italy. They've done some amazing research and dissection. So these aren't theoretical structures. These are actual things where they go into the anatomy lab and they basically do dissection and then they see these interconnections. After we do that, we're going to talk about some of the relationships with acupuncture. It's very, very interesting when you look at acupuncture because they have very specific points on what they call meridians or lines of energy in terms of the uh, Chinese philosophy of how this particular form of therapy works. And then they have specific points on those lines. Well, it's interesting that if we look at the correlation between where these lines and meridians are located, they're exactly on the fascial planes. So after the taping, I'm going to mark a few points in there, and then we'll sort of show you some of the correlations between these different types of therapies. Hello, Dr. Evangelos Milanas. What I'll be demonstrating now is the superficial back line, and I'll be taping it uh, along the back here uh, on Thara so that you'll get a visual of the fascial plane, this part of the kinetic chain. So once again, it's the superficial back line. So when we consider the superficial back line, we're going to start at the bottom of the foot. And so it starts out in the plantar fascia and the deep short flexors of the foot. So it's penetrating different layers, superficial and deep. The fibers wrap up and they encompass the heel, tying right into the Achilles tendon. It's a very strong connection. And then that follows right up into the soleus, which is the deep muscle of the calf, fanning out to the sides and then into a more superficial layer called the gastrocnemius. So remember, this is one continuous connection. Even though we're breaking it down into different anatomical parts, you have to think of the fascia as a continuous plane all the way up and encompassing the body front and back into the sides. Now when we follow it from the calf, from the soleus and gastrocnemius, the superficial back line travels up into the hamstrings. And the hamstrings, very strong connection. The hamstrings cross the joint this way, and the soleus, uh, or not soleus, the gastrocnemius crosses that way. So it's a very strong fibrous interconnection. Following that up, it ties right into the ischial tuberosity, which is your sit bone, and right into the dorsal sacral ligament. As we follow that up, it goes into this area, the sacral lumbar fascia. This is very dense, thick connective tissue, up into the erector spinae muscles. Now these are the long muscles that travel the whole length of the spine. They're like cables. But not only does the fascia tie into these muscles, it penetrates deep into the transversospinalis muscles. So once again, the continuity is, is quite incredible because it's penetrating various levels, maintaining a nice continuity all the way up. When we get to this point, it ties right into the musculature in the back of the neck below the, uh, the skull here, the suboccipitals. And at this point, it ties right into the fascia of the scalp, the galena aponeurotica which comes across the back and top like a cap, tying into the frontal bone. So when we're looking at the superficial back line, it's one continuous fascial plane. In another word, it's, it's part of your kinetic chain. Everything is interconnected from the bottom of the foot into the heel, all the way up to the front of the skull. Okay, now that we have a few acupuncture points on the body, I put a, a number along what we call the bladder meridian. Now, it's really important to note the relationships between the fascial plane or the kinetic chain and the bladder meridian. So 
We've got a number of points here, and you'll notice that they're in close proximity to where the tape is. Now, the meridian itself actually overlies right on top of these fascial planes, which is really interesting, especially when we look at some specific points. Now, you may look at a point and you say, well, okay, how close do I have to be to that point to actually get a reaction? Not that close. There's some interesting research that's come out. Uh, if we look at it, and we look at a German study that was done, for example, and it was quite extensive on a thousand different people. And they took one group and they did true acupuncture, what we call barren acupuncture, and they also did one sham acupuncture. What's interesting is the sham acupuncture was actually placed not on the points, but in close proximity to the point. So even though it was still not on the classical point, it was still on the fascial plane. And they also had another group, kind of as a control group, where they basically just used it to see if they could get a placebo effect. Now, they found really good results with both the sham group and the true group, which was interesting. Which means that something is going on at a neurological level. This wasn't even close to placebo, so even a couple years past this point, they'd see really good changes. Now, let's take a look at these individual points and just see what I'm talking about when I say each of these points can affect things on the kinetic chain on the fascial plane. Now, as I said, the bladder meridian is sitting right on top of the line that we drew around here which is the superficial back line. Now, let's look at these points. And we say, okay, I've got a point up here, and this is bladder number 11. Now, it's interesting when we look at this point, because we say, okay, this is up on the shoulder. Now, when we talk about kinetic chain relationships, we're always saying how tension in one area will affect another area. We've got a tight, restricted shoulder. It can cause neck pain. Neck pain will change the position and the tension that happens in terms of the base of the skull kind of pull it back a little bit. This could create headaches and all sorts of problems there. So they would use this point for not just the localized area in the shoulder, but so it would affect the entire head. Quite interesting. We're going to move down a little bit here. And we get into the part of the lumbar spine down here right across the L5. This is bladder number 23, point on the bladder ready. If we look at that point, it's not just used for pain in this area, but the entire area up and down a bit here. And it affects a wider area on the whole fascial plane. Move down a bit, get it behind the knee. And we say, okay, this point right here is kind of over top of a muscle called the popliteus. Now, this particular point here could be used for problems in the lumbar spine. So in other words, we've got a point that's quite distant, and yet it's on a kinetic chain. It's on an area where we have fascial relationships. We look at it and we say, okay, we, we know very well the calf muscles connect and the hamstrings connect, and then it basically connects into the low back and up into the fascia here. Taking tension off of this area here will actually create a positive effect in that area here. Now, we could either make, take tension off through, uh, it could be massage, it could be active release, it could be a wide variety of different types of therapeutic uh, modalities, or acupuncture itself, and we still get the same result. Move down a bit, and it's really interesting. This is bladder number 55, similar effect to the low back. Move down to the ankle here. Now, this particular point here, bladder number 59, What's interesting about this is they actually use this for headaches. So, how could this possibly create an effect on top of the head there? There has to be some kind of a neurological response taking place. Same thing, bladder number 64 on the foot here. That's also used for headaches. And you say, well, how could, they, how could this possibly happen here? If we consider how acupuncture is done, we take a needle, we put it into a specific area, and then we stimulate it, and we turn it. And as we turn it, we start to feel a little bit of a tug on there. And we say, okay, I notice there's some you know, resistance on there. This is actually caused, called a tug response. And they actually have little robots they can actually use to measure, measure the amount of tension on that needle, which is quite interesting because even though you put the needle in and you may leave it there for half an hour or 40 minutes, you still remain, you still basically have a, a tension on that or a tug being created on that, which does not diminish with time. Now, that actually causes a stretch throughout the area, and that stretch has both neurological and circulatory effects. So we're treating something down here, and yet that's affecting the entire kinetic chain all the way to the top of the head. So we start to see correlations. We start to see a correlation between the superficial back line and the bladder meridian. Now, this is really, really powerful work. Now we're going to move on here, and we're going to go on to the superficial front line. And we're also going to start to show some correlations between fascial planes and classical acupuncture meridian points.